In this video, we describe a step-by-step -step procedure for germ cell transplantation into mouse testes. The germ cell transplant assay was first described by Dr. Ralph Brinston's lab in 1994 and demonstrated that transplanted germ cells could engraft the testes in infertile recipient mice and produce spermatogenesis. In this way, germ cell transplantation can be used to obtain fundamental insights about spermatogonial stem cells. To produce transgenic animals by genetically manipulating donor cells prior to transplantation, and may also be used to preserve the germline of valuable animals or to preserve human male fertility. Germ cell transplantation can be performed by injecting donor cells directly into the seminiferous tubules, the retetestes, or following the efferin duct bundle into the retetestes. In this presentation, we are going to focus on this last technique. For efficient and robust colonization of germ cells, the seminiferous epithelium of recipient animals should be depleted of endogenous germ cells. One way to deplete endogenous germ cells from the testes of recipient mice is to treat them with the chemotherapeutic agent busulfan at about 4 to 6 weeks of age. Approximately 6 weeks after the busulfan injection, seminiferous tubules should be depleted of germ cells and recipient mice are ready for the germ cell transplantation. After transplantation, we wait approximately 8 weeks to allow time for engraft donor cells to establish colonies of spermatogenesis. Thus, following this workflow, we will describe first the chemical sterilization of recipient mice with bisulfan. Remember to work always in sterile conditions. Once we know the weight of the animals, we can proceed to preparing fresh the bisulfan to be injected. Here you can see the materials for this purpose. Due to the high toxicity of busulfan, which is an alkylating agent, remember always to work in a biosafety cabinet fume hood using gloves, lab coat and mask for your own security. Proceed waiting enough busulfan for the preparation of a stock of 4 mg per meal. Consider the number of mice to be treated and assume that the approximate volume to be injected per mouse will be around 300 microliters in a dose of 40 mg per kilogram. The dose required to cause germ cell depletion must be optimized for each mouse strain and can range from 40 to 60 mg per kilogram. Once weighted, busulfan should be dissolved in equal volume of DMSO first and then water. Make sure that it is completely dissolved and keep it warm using a 40 degrees heat block. Load dissolved busulfan into a 1 ml syringe and inject it to the mice via intraperitoneal injection. Also, it is important to transfer treated animals to clean cages two to three days after the injection. Then, discard the soiled bedding through the hazardous waste stream, since busulfan is excreted in urine. Here you can see the expected testicular histology of different busulfan doses after six weeks. After the preparation of recipient mice, we can proceed with the transplantation of germ cells. For that, here you can see the equipment setup that we use. Apart from the equipment setup, other materials and reagents are shown here. As donor cells, a good control of the technique can be a freshly prepared suspension of mouse testicular cells in a concentration of 100,000 cells per microliter. This cell suspension should be kept on ice during the process. Here you can see a schematic representation of the injection process that we will follow, entering the efferin duct bundle and injecting cells in the rotted testes to fill up the seminiferous tubules with the donor cell suspension. After preparing the experimental setup, we proceed with the anesthesia of recipient animals. In this case, we use 5% isoflurane. Additionally, an analgesia administration via subcutaneous injection of 0.1 mg per kilogram of buprenorphine is recommended to relieve pain in the animals after the surgery. It is also important to carefully fix the animal with the anesthesia inhalator to the platform of the microscope. Then, clean the abdominal area with betadine before starting the surgery. Perform a 1 cm length incision on the linea alba. Retrieve the first testis carefully pulling out from the fat pad surrounding the epididymus. After this, we use a sterile V-cut paper pads to deposit the gonad. Use fine forceps to dissect the membrane connecting the caput epididymis and the apical part of the testis. 
If necessary, carefully peel out the fat covering the efferent dust bundle in order to visualize it clearly, with special care to avoid breaking the blood vessel under the efferent duct bundle. At this point, sterile paper sponges can be used to position the testes, efferent duct and epididymis and absorb excess fluid. Here you can see the testes in upright position in the left and the efferent duct bundle aligned with the injection pipette that will enter from the right side. Load 8 to 10 microliters of freshly prepared donor cell suspension into a 70 micron inner diameter beveled glass needle from the rear side and place it in the microinjector unit. Use fine forceps to carefully pull the distal section of the efferent duct bundle away from the testes. At the same time, the micromanipulator unit is used to introduce the needle into the efferent duct. The injection needle is advanced along the duct toward the testis until the tip enters the red testis. Do not advance the tip of the needle too far, or it will exit the red testis and enter the interstitial space. Optimal injection pressure should be between 50 and 200 hectopascal. Increase it gradually and check how seminiferous tubules start to be filled up with the blue staining. Continue until the needle is empty. Here you can visualize the injection process with higher resolution. Usually, the red testis can be visualized as a small clear zone at the intersection of testis and efferent ducts that is filled up just before the blue staining starts to be distributed along the seminiferous tubules. The injection is complete when 60 to 70 percent of seminiferous tubules visible on the surface of the testis are filled with blue dye. After the injection, carefully remove the needle and the sponges. Next, carefully return the transplanted gonads. In order to prevent testicular torsions, return first the testes and then the epididymis, followed by the fat pad covering it. To finish, suture the abdominal muscle with discontinuous suture and the skin with the staples. Return the animals to their cages and place them on thermal plates at 37 degrees. Testes of recipient animals are analyzed approximately 8 weeks after transplantation for colonies of donors' spermatogenesis. If donor cells contain a marker transgene, such as LACSET or GFP, donor spermatogenesis can be easily recognized in the seminiferous tubules of recipient testes by blue or fluorescent green color. Here we show an example of a GFP donor testis and a non-transgenic recipient testis. Each colony of donor spermatogenesis arises from the clonogenic proliferation and differentiation of a single spermatogonial stem cell. To sum up, the germ cell transplantation essay constitutes the gold standard for testing the potential of germ cells to colonize the spermatogenic niche. Both fresh and cryopreserved testicular cells are suitable for this technique as donor germ cells. Also, enrichment of living spermatogonial stem cells previous to the transplant can improve the efficiency of colonization. For analysis, detection of the donor genotype in the ejaculate sperm can be employed in most-to-most -most transplant experiments. However, xenotransplantation of germ cells from phylogenetically distant species results in colonization and spermatogonial expansion, but they fail in their spermatogenic progression due to evolutive incompatibilities. Thus, donor cells should be labeled with reported genes or alternatively design an effective strategy with specific antibodies to track them. For further information, please refer to the following literature. Thanks for your attention.